welcome uh, to the Planning for 2023-24 Driving Operation Transmission Success webinar. Uh, Moran, next slide. Uh, we have a very simple agenda today. Um, we have a simple welcome introductions uh, of our guest speakers. Um, then we will go into a open discussion uh, with uh, Dan from United Way uh, on transformation success and how uh, some of the insight that he has uh, with United Way. Uh, we'll be moving to uh, the Q&A session. So uh, everyone is muted on this call because uh, we have uh, over 200 people actually registered for this event. So uh, everyone's muted. So please use the Q&A button that you see at the bottom of the screen to enter to, to, uh, any question that you might have for Dan and for, for, for prosecution. We have a short closing remark and uh, that will be the agenda for today. Uh, next. So um, on the presentation today, the format is very simple. You'll see the question that being asked by our moderator. Uh, you'll see a slide that has that little visual aid icon at the bottom. So those are not, uh, we, do, we do not want to PowerPoint anyone to death today. We want you, you to hear the experience and insight from, from Dan. Um, and those are just visual aid uh, slide. The entire presentation together with the recording of this uh, webinar will be presented to you after the event. So look for that, that email from us. Um, as I said earlier, because we have over 200 people registered for this event, all the attendees are muted. Uh, please use the Q&A button at the bottom to, end, to enter uh, uh, the question that you have uh, for, for us. Next. Um, so on behalf of the prosecution, I, I uh, would like to introduce myself. I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Prosecution. My name is Daniel. Uh, joining me today is uh, our Vice President of Public Sector and Nonprofit Solutions, uh, Roger Mack. And our moderator today is Moran uh, Ravindra, and Moran is one of our senior consultants for the nonprofit, sec uh, uh, nonprofit sector. Next. So for those who work with us and who, for those who don't know who, who is Prosecution, uh, we are inspired by the resilience and commitment of the nonprofit that we support, including many, many of you. Uh, so Prosecution is a Microsoft for tech for social impact partners. And we work very closely with Microsoft to help nonprofit organizations in Canada. Uh, then we're losing your audio. Sorry. Is okay. it, am I back? Okay, sorry. So we are inspired by the resilience and commitment of the nonprofit that we support. Uh, we are a Microsoft nonprofit uh, show, uh, tech for social impact partners. And as such, we work closely with Microsoft to help nonprofits in Canada uh, leverage technology to create greater social impact, delivers effective program uh, outcomes. Um, and we do that really through the simplicity of the cloud computing um, so that there's no more complex infrastructure, uh, a nonprofit common data model. Data is key for us to create that 360 view of our clients. Uh, and we use very advanced uh, transformation technologies such as machine learning and robotic process automation to give time back to people in your organization for more meaningful tasks. But most importantly, uh, your collaboration and your and the partnership that we have with you really help us drive greater social impact. And as such, uh, I would like to pass the floor to our moderator today, Moran. So Moran, you can take it from here. Thank you very much, Daniel. Um, so everyone, uh, with no further ado, I'd like to introduce Dan Nielsen uh, to the call. Really today's purpose, as, as many of you have heard from me, either directly or indirectly, is to build collaboration. We asked uh, Dan to come to the call primarily because he has such a wealth of experience in both bridging operational and technology within United Way and the sector. There's so many different aspects that thankfully I've, he's been able to share with me. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to share these insights and opportunities with other agencies, especially as you go down the journey. So with no further ado, uh, Dan, would you mind telling us about yourself as chief and your experience as chief transformation officer within United Way? Thanks, Brian, and thank you uh, everyone for your interest uh, in this topic. As you'll see by the end of this, I'm very, very passionate about uh, transformation. Uh, a bit about myself, I'm a senior IT leader with 20 years of experience, uh, primarily in retail supply chain technology. And over the five, last five years, I actually made the transition to nonprofit working with United Way, United Way Calgary, and then United Way BC. And I've had involvement uh, working with uh, United Ways across the country. 
my focus um, as chief transformation officer has really been looking at how do you build a modern and resilient uh, united way leveraging technology and optimizing the way we work for uh, the evolution of digital uh, in our sector. So I have a lot of private and nonprofit experience and I find the two come uh, together quite well. As many of the practices I um, helped implement with e-commerce uh, actually have flowed through to the work I've been doing in uh, United Way. So um, Dan, as you explain that, right? One of the big areas is we hear a lot about digital transformation, but Wiz, Wiz, your role is really a combination of operational and digital transformation. Can you tell us how you would describe digital transformation in your world? Um, so, you know, it's interesting, uh, whether we like it or not, we're in a digital age right now. Our customers are expected to engage or expecting to engage with us with the mediums they want, when they want, how they want. They want their data real time. They have infinite products uh, and uh, services choices across um, um, the web. And you know that's just our reality. So when organizations are thinking about digital transformation, automatically people go to technology. In many, many organizations, uh, transformation or digital transformation is, is driven as a technology project. I'm here to tell you it's more a business um, project it's really about reinventing your operational, your business model to engage with your primary stakeholders, your customers in a way that they want to engage in leveraging technology. But I use this analogy a lot for people that work with me. If you have amazing technologies, but you haven't optimized your processes or you don't have the right skill sets to actually use that technology, um, you just have a nice car parked in a garage. So when I think of digital transformation, it's truly about reinventing your business model, looking at your uh, skills and capability in the people you have and the relationships, the partnerships you have, the way you do your processes and execute them online versus in person. And then underlying and supporting that is the technology needed to provide this secure, amazing customer experience that really uh, allow customers to establish a lifelong relationship with your uh, organization. The slide in front of you is a, is a great depiction. It comes from uh, my time uh, working with Deloitte on some of this stuff. But the idea is you're not just transforming your business model, you're transforming your organization. You're shifting your culture to really excel in this new digital technology so that you can achieve your mandate better. So if you just do one side of the equation without the other, uh, your chances of success are much, uh, uh, much more limited uh, in your transformation journey. That's great, thank you so much, Dan. Um, really probably the, sorry, and the next area is like, how do you really assess when you've gone through that, Dan? Like how have you made the distinction of, what type of transformation and when to take it on? You know, I'd be interested to get a people's thoughts uh, on this, but um, essentially I put these questions up because when should you look at digital transformation? What are the triggers that say, hey, I really need to look at my business model and make the adjustments. And, you know, I, I think of uh, declining revenue, philanthropic revenue, government grants, um, increased competition in your sector, um, is there a need to engage with your customers differently? And I'll include stakeholders too. United Way does a lot of work with um, other agencies. So do you need to optimize the way you work? Um, is your existing bottle uh, causing bottlenecks in your delivery of services? Do you have limitations in your ability to expand your business or bring on new services? Are you always facing skill set shortages in specific areas? Um, that would allow you to grow. So uh, resourcing such an important um, part of um, transformation. And then do you have increased regulations, uh, government regulations, uh, privacy, uh, you know, uh, rules of engagement, cybersecurity around uh, your business that are really causing you to look at your business model and say, are we delivering these services effectively? Um, in United Way's case, we were yes to all of those. 
Uh, I'd be interested, I don't know if anybody's uh, interested in sharing their perspective, but to me, those are triggers that really um, uh, should be discussed and uh, thought through um, that would drive transformation uh, in the sector. So I, I don't know if anybody else has uh, the same uh, uh, thoughts, but those certainly were triggers for us at the United Way. And I would argue for uh, many nonprofits that are going through some of the similar challenges. So I think that's a great point, Dan. Um, this, I think, is kind of where I catch 22, right? Some of these may trigger, to your point, the need for operational transformation, but there's also limitations that they may cause, right? So maybe to start, Dan, like you mentioned a few great points on external challenges like compliance, funders, and regulations. Could you give us insights how you've been able to overcome or navigate around these obstacles internally from your experience? Yeah, I, um, transformation isn't uh, easy. And like I say, in many organizations, transformation starts with technology. When I uh, started with United Way, getting a baseline and understanding our capabilities in the organization really allowed uh, me to see what we could take on, what we should focus on uh, moving forward. And um, what I would say, establishing a plan, a vision for where you can go with your digital capabilities aligned to your strategic plan is a must uh, in your transformation journey. And then if you think of it as an iterative process, you really want to um, uh, sprinkle your plan with quick wins and wins along the way that keep people excited about your progress in maturing and building these digital uh, capabilities uh, in your organization. But um, when I start, it's really understanding what the organization can take on, what their uh, existing digital maturity is in that space, what skills they have, how, um, how uh, extensive is process automation in the organization, their data capabilities, and then establishing a plan with the business teams, the leadership team on what we need to do to be most successful. I am a strong, strong believer that technology underpins uh, your business capabilities. It doesn't supersede them. They need to work together and leveraging technology to build what you're already great at uh, can really make you successful um, moving forward. And I would say one of the biggest uh, challenges is uh, many organizations, when they look at uh, transformation, they wanna transform everything. They really want to look at the whole business model and maybe like uh, change a significant portion of it. And what I would say is you really need um, to uh, look at transformation bite-sized. It's a multi-year project or program in many cases. And what you wanna do is bring your business value forward. So one of the things I look, like to do is when you're looking at transformation opportunities like leveraging your data more effectively, for example, to drive um, better decision-making, uh, looking at process automation to drive efficiency, which gives you capacity to take on more on the front end. I like evaluating which one will give you the greatest benefit and starting with those type of projects to really build this capability like building blocks to get to the ultimate transformation. I call it digital bootcamp, but think of it this way as you're training your organization to be able to take on greater um, projects. And then factor on, you know, if I have uh, external factors where I need to meet legislative requirements, customers are really expecting something different from us, our competition is driving there, that really factors into what you need to bring forward. And if you can zero in, laser focus on what's most um, important to your organization, that is what will allow you to be successful. So um, many organizations, uh, they want to implement the CRM. They think that's going to solve all their problems. I would argue if you had bad business processes and don't have the skills, a CRM uh, might actually make it worse, not better. So uh, technology is a supporter, an enabler, not the solution. I think that's great, Dan. I haven't heard someone be open and honest about the CRM actually being a, a problem for an organization, right? And I think we need to have more people like yourself just be open and transparent about the pros and cons. Um, even one of the areas that we pulled up for yourself is some things that you just talked about from complex mapping, employee resistance in different areas from a survey that we pulled for about 120 uh, nonprofit and other public sector agencies. So we'll continue down this conversation to see how you how you've overcame many of these areas. So speaking on that complex change, Dan, 
is really even for the CRM or any major system, right? How have you decided what to take on and how, how much impact that's going to be managed, right? Because many of these could be very key deciding factors, especially as many of the organizations are redoing their planning for the next year and what is a realistic milestone. You know, when you're um, approaching transformation, I think you, um, as a leader in the organization and a leadership team, you have to have an honest look at what you can and can't do. You, you really need to be truly honest and look at where um, uh, you need to continue to run your business and where you can actually uh, give space for transformation. Many, many organizations always try to do transformation on top of what they already do. And um, there could be some real uh, pitfalls in that. I, I talked about CRMs. If you just did research on the internet and you looked at how many CRM projects failed, there's probably more that have failed than actually been successfully implemented because essentially you're trying to do this major transformational project, uh, staying true to your, your business, but that project can have repercussions on your ability to deliver your services today. So I would really, uh, take a look at what cannot change as a result of your transformation project, what needs to stay true and continue to, to operate without uh, fault during your transformation work. And then, as I mentioned before, is looking at what transformational activities are going to have the greatest impact to your business strategy. Where do you need to focus on? And you need to marry those two. Um, so if you, for example, don't resource transformation effectively, when I say resourcing, I mean funding and people and skills and partnerships. If you don't spend the time, you don't give it the space it needs to be successful, your chances of success are much, much less. If you start taking your, your strong players in your organizational um, model and allocating them 100% to your transformational activities, but you're not backfilling, you're actually putting your existing organization at risk, having a significant impact on both initiatives. So I, I think as a leadership team, you really need to plan out how you want to approach transformation and have a strategy developed around it. Um, because if you just decide to implement uh, technology projects or individual projects without having a master plan, they can collide with each other. They can have a significant impact on your business. And they will not give you the benefits you were hoping for in the time frame uh, you, uh, you were looking at. So to me, uh, uh, your transformational activities versus org organizational impact are like tied together. And if you start impacting one aspect of your business to do the other, you could do that for a very short period of time. But if you extend that, you're actually putting your whole business operations at risk um, in the way you're approaching it. So Dan, I think that was a great point. And this kind of segues into the next one where you, where you talked about resource allocation from transformation to day-to-day -to -day tasks, right? When you have managed these new transformational initiatives, what would you say is the bare minimum of things that need to be validated or internally prepared for before you even decide go or no go? Like many agencies and organizations we've came across and including yourself are really under tremendous pressure, but to even start something, what are those like make or breaks that you have to have before you even start down the path in your, from your experience? So I, I'm gonna talk a bit about technology process and people, which is very common, but I'll start with the people side. So um, you need to be honest with yourself in the capabilities your organization has. Uh, strategic partnerships to fill in skill gaps and capacity gaps is a must have um, because essentially, if you wanna keep your existing operations running smoothly, you shouldn't like um, uh, borrow from that too heavily to uh, drive your transformation. And when you start talking about technology, I, you know, in many organizations, you'll do a bit of an audit, but you really understand your maturity in that space. So for example, um, do you have a cybersecurity practice where you have the foundational capabilities to really embark and build your business in um, the web uh, space? I know many organizations build great websites, but if you were to do an audit on the work they're doing, if they're doing transactions, uh, they have a lot of gaps in their security model. Do your systems move data automatically between each other to fulfill key processes? If you're primarily manual in the way you're doing it, 
the move to the web actually increases the amount of manual processes needed, not decrease the amount of manual processes. So understanding your maturity and your digital capabilities is critical. If you don't have some type of architecture plan that outlines how you want to bring your technology together to drive your business strategy, that is a starting point. You need to have an idea, and this is an area you could seek help to be able to do that. The final point is, if you're making most of your decisions from the gut versus leveraging data, that might mean that you don't have a very strong um, in, uh, data analytics practice, which should be supporting many of your decision making on uh, in uh, uh, digital. If uh, the better data you get, the sooner you get, the quicker you can pivot. So to me, uh, understanding your current state capabilities, understanding where you have gaps and really setting yourself for success is critical. One final point on this is I know many of us reach out to um, partners to do digital transformation. I would really caution throwing away the keys uh, on your transformation. It is truly a partnership and your work needs to allow you to augment what you do best. So it needs to be tied into your business strategy. Otherwise, uh, you may get a product that does not even come close to doing what you need uh, at the end. Yeah. So even from, especially in the private, even from the private sector, communication can be challenging across various means, right? And where we, or even from our experience in yourself, and like United Way is such a very large organization, but even nonprofits, agencies, may not have had a necessary need to change, right? From funding models, different areas, and individuals have been used to a process for so long, right? So how have you really like, and now that COVID has really forced most organizations to change in a hybrid model, and now taking that next step further, right? Of changing individuals, their minds, and, and ensuring that they can work effectively. How have you been able to effectively communicate that at, from, the oper from the technology into operations, right? And creating that succinct vision. So um, to me, many transformation projects fail because we think of organizational change last. Um, we go after the technology um, and all these great strategic enablement uh, projects that uh, we want to put in place. But foundationally, it's all about the people. Um, so if you implement new technologies and uh, people aren't using it, uh, you're gonna fail. If you uh, are throwing uh, new capabilities into an organization but haven't done the right amount of engagement, uh, you might get resistance in rolling it out uh, through the organization. And truly transformation hits almost every aspect of, the, of your organization, uh, whether I was at Canadian Tire, FGL, or, or in United Way, it remains true. Um, you, every process has dependency. You depend on each other. Um, so I would say foundational to your transformational activities is building a robust communication and change plan. And what I find really interesting is uh, when people think of transformation, they think everything's going to change. I think as part of your journey in communication, you need to be, highlight what's not going to change, what's going to remain true. So people have an anchor to work from when they approach transformation. And the other thing too, is if you're changing something, it's really important that you understand why you can explain it, that people can buy into a vision on where you want to go. I keep coming back to, if you're just implementing a CRM and you say to people, uh, I'm, I'm implementing a CRM, but you don't explain what it's going to enable, what business value it's going to drive, how it's going to enable the organization to move forward, how can you expect your teams to buy in to that work? You need to spend as much time, in my opinion, really focusing on the engagement of your internal stakeholders and external stakeholders in the change so that they can support the work and that they feel part of the process. Um, I, I, I can't stress enough that uh, at the beginning of your plan, you need to spend some time understanding who your stakeholders are and how engaged do they need to be. If you're working with governments and the systems you're changing are going to have an impact on the way you interact with them, on your customers, on uh, other external stakeholders, you need to let people know that you're making these changes so that one, they'll know it's happening. They might be a little more tolerant to bumps you're going to have along the road 
um, in adopting these changes and spending the time internally to train your team so that when you do launch, whether you're, it's like 100% successful or you have bumps, you have the right people engaged to be able to deliver those services effectively. And I still work at this, Martin, like to be tr uh, truthful, I do many, many transformation projects and you can never communicate enough. You can never train enough. You really need to spend the time in your plan. I would, I would caution you to put it last. It should almost be first in understanding how extensive that change is, uh, is going to be to the organization. Well, I love you even said, Dan, that no one even talks about is the communication of what's not going to change, right? Yeah. No one ever talks about that because to get the adoption of people to know that the world isn't turning upside down, I think that's a great point. And I've never heard that. So thank you so much. Nice. Um, and now um, as we get further, uh, we're already getting closer to the end of our webinar, but I would ask that anyone, we want to make this an interactive forum. So please post any questions to the Q&A. We really want to make uh, answer any questions and propose anything to help any other agencies or share any insights we can during the call. If there's any questions we won't get to, we will have this reviewed by Dan to privately message you after. Um, so really, um, leading transformation within United Way, um, would you be able to explain kind of that process internally uh, Dan, how you've done that, right? Because as we talked about, it could be, there's so many silos of United Ways in different regions, but even the amalgamation of United Way BC into one entity, right? How has that worked with you, for you? Um, I, I'm a strong believer in uh, taking on bite-sized activities. So, you know, when I went into the United Way and you started talking about digital transformation, be it at Calgary or be it at BC, uh, not many people really understood uh, what transformation was about um, and fundamental things like project management skills to being able to deliver projects. When you start talking about process automation, um, uh, BI, using your data, um, the, the existing business model was very traditional in its approach. So when I went into the United Way, um, initially, I wanted to change everything because I was like, man, we can do such great work in community if we do this and this and this. But going back to my principles around change management is you got to give the organization time to adapt. You got to give the organization the space it needs to evolve to achieving your transformation goals. And if your transformation goals are too far away from what you do today, it's actually more challenging to actually implement that change. So when I approached United Way, I really focused on some of the aspects of technology first, really looked at leveraging data because I find um, data transformation, data insights is by far the most valuable thing you can do with digital transformation to support your existing business model and allow you to have the insights on uh, taking your strategic plan to the next level. The other thing too, is I really focused on foundational capabilities. Um, so uh, really looking at uh, what we needed to do to be successful in implementing some of the transformation we wanted. I keep coming back to the idea of boot camps, but I have a very, I, I always have one of the smallest teams in the organization, but what I really try to do is build up these core capabilities that are gonna allow us to be successful. You don't always need to go external to uh, bring in those skills. So really focused on building up my team, zeroed in on the most important aspects of the transformation that would drive the maximum business value, use those as quick wins to actually drive some of the change in the organization, gain credibility, gain support for the work I was doing. And then, um, you know, I'm at a stage now where we're actually establishing our vision on where we want to go from uh, doing digital to being digital and what are the steps we need to get there. Some of it is technology, but a big portion of it is about building new capabilities with our uh, the skills in the organization and optimizing our business model. So we're looking at all three and really building a plan that's going to allow us to move forward. Thank you, Sam. Um, so really, as you talk about building the transfer, like getting into the brass tacks of a transformational plan, and you've, you've highlighted the progression internally of United Way, right? I would say many people may be in, a start, in, in the start of a major transformation or halfway through it. 
what would you what tips would you have to anyone on the call then that's in this process or just starting this of making you know this i um i i would say you need to be um truthful and kind to yourself transformations are usually a journey they're not like a one-year technology project they're multi-year uh, in nature especially if you're trying to adjust your culture and you know when you're talking about transformation there's a few different ways you can approach that one is you can try to bring your existing organization along or two you can actually separate out your transformation activities and build specialized teams to do the work and then integrate it back into your organization. I keep coming back to really understanding what you're capable of and what you're trying to achieve. And then working with strategic partners that uh, can allow you to do that. And resourcing, unfortunately, is a truth in all of this. If you do not have the funding or skills needed to do uh, the transformation you're looking for, I would uh, suggest, are there partnerships that can be established from uh, between uh, multiple entities to actually look at enabling transformation so that there's this win-win uh, scenario? Uh, private, public, um, and uh, nonprofit partnerships are ways of approaching um, transformation. So I would say, have your plan and, and you know, don't just share your plan internally share it with trusted partners to get advice from organizations that do this work to give you uh, the help. And uh, if you do have a board, I would leverage the board significantly in helping shape where you want to go, because there's a good chance you may have to draw in reserves to be able to do some of this work. And they will be looking for some of the benefits you've put into your plan uh, showing through in the results in your organization. So bringing all those stakeholders along, getting the right level of engagement is critical. And um, don't always just look ex externally. There are change agents and people that are willing to learn new capabilities in the organization. A mix of external, internal, very, very successful to allow the organization uh, to move forward. So thanks, Dan. Um, I just even for sharing the sample plan that you put together, I found it extremely helpful because it just doesn't focus from the technology. You have great other aspects from employee engagements, digital skill sets, and how that integrates to your point. So thank you so much. This deck will be shared with everyone on the call after. Yeah, and, and to be clear, there's numerous, numerous transformation uh, uh, roadmaps. This one is primarily focused on some of the core capabilities. I tried to give examples of what you could throw in there, but truly your transformational uh, plan will incorporate all the aspects of your organization that are most important and should support the delivery of your strategic capabilities outlined in your uh, organizational strategic plan. That's great, thank you. Um, so really, one of the philosophy questions then is everyone really needs to drive change. There's a lot of different hurdles, a lot of different things on everyone's plate. How have you been able to identify and address, like find quick wins in transformational change from your experience within United Way or overall? Where do you look and how can it be easy to get to? Well, I, I know from my time uh, being in uh, the private sector and working, I can tell you right now, process automation is a huge opportunity in uh, many organizations to optimize their business model. And people might say, well, you know, optimizing your business process isn't necessarily going to give you strategic value because you're not delivering a new capability per se. But I would argue that in some cases, if you can pick low hanging fruit and process automation, it actually gives you space and resourcing availability to be able to do work. And it starts training your team on leveraging some of these new technologies. Process automation sounds easily, but it involves introducing new technologies for repeatable tasks, changing roles to manage exceptions versus the process as a whole, and actually getting people to trust the technology to do this work. Uh, when I started at United Way, I'll never forget, I was working with the CFO and I was saying, hey, you know, I think there's a real opportunity to optimize some processes leveraging automation. He's like, yeah, I don't believe it. And by the time he left his tenure at United Way Calgary, he was one of the strongest proponents for technology automation because he really saw the benefits it uh, drove. So I look for quick wins internally in the operating model because that's closest. You might not be changing things too much. But I also look at changes um, and quick wins on things you can do to really 
uh, drive value in your strategic uh, plan. It could be, for example, optimizing your website so that you're getting increased donation sharing uh, information more easily. You pop up first on search so your brand's more recognized. So it's truly finding a combination of both. And to be clear, I don't find the quick wins. Working with my business partners, we find the quick wins. It's an organizational process. It cannot be a technology process. That's great. Um, so just speaking on to quick wins, uh, one of the aspects on just automation we wanted to bring to everyone's attention is I'm going to pass the floor over to Roger. Roger's uh, going to just dis explain high level, talking about automation as a whole around robotic automation. The simplest version, me being non-technical, is the one I love to use the most is setting up an out of office, going on vacation, right? Obviously, technology in different areas have come significantly further. Uh, with that, I'd like to hand the floor over to Roger to kind of explain where the technology can benefit and provide quick wins to other agencies overall and how it relates to nonprofit and public sector. Oh, sure, Maren. Uh, we are talking about automation and the idea is to automate in order to gain efficiency, right? And uh, we find that some of the uh, some of the common challenge with organization is to deal with mundane manual process. It could be data entry. It could be uh, doing the invoice, uploading the uh, uh, doing the invoice data into the CL ELP, or it could be entering the referral data into the CRM. And some what's worse, sometimes double data entry. We've seen organization they have to take the data from the government systems uh, and to uh, copy that and to uh, copy that over to the internal systems. So all these. In today's term, it can be automated. Now, uh, we talk about our, uh, our PA. Our PA stands for Robotic Process Automation. It's a technology um, that's becoming quite popular these days. Uh, uh, in, effectively, our PA is a way to mimic human interactions in order to uh, 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 automate the process. You talk about, uh, in the good old days, we use macro um, uh, to automate the steps. The LPA is a glorified way or, or a lot more sophisticated way to automate human processes. However, uh, in the traditional sense, um, the LPA technologies require a steep learning curve and also uh, often investment as well. But what we've been able to do for the customer is we enable cloud-based LPA. Uh, Instead of calling it LPA, uh, LPA, we we consider them as digital worker. We deploy them in the cloud, and uh, we work with the customer. We train the bot uh, to put uh, to mimic the human interaction, such as uh, entering the referral data into the CRM, or copying data from the government system to our internal systems, or uploading the report to both our internal system and the government systems. So this can all be done using a cloud LP, a cloud cloud digital worker. The benefit is. Uh, it's very easy to implement. You do not require huge upfront investment. You do not need to uh, train any uh, technical staff to do the LPA. Um, uh, so upfront investment is very low. Uh, the uh, the operating cost is a fraction of a human. So if you have someone who has to enter hundreds of uh, documents to the systems every day, uh, this the, the, the cost of using this board is only a fraction of a human cost would be. Another thing is, uh, this kind of process, this kind of automation has very minimal or no impact to the, to the organization culture. As Dan alluded to, when it comes to digital transformation, often we we, we need to we need to buy in from the organization. Over the bot automation, we're simply replacing human with a digital worker. Therefore, uh, there is minimal impact to the to the operating process and to the organization culture. Uh, that's our experience. Thank you, Roger. You, so mm -hmm. really for everyone it's not our technology it's just the overall so if there's a way if, please look into this further or you can engage us if necessary um really and lastly we want to give more time back to questions uh dan any closing comments that that you would provide anyone to sure they have a successful transition in the upcoming year uh, i was looking at some of the questions ahead of time there's some really good ones but i i would say um, your tolerance to change as an organization needs to be factored into your ability to deliver uh, the transformational work. So if you have really low tolerance for change and you're planning to do this major transformation, your culture might actually get in the way of your ability to delivering what you need to. I, I keep coming back to you. You need to set yourself up 
to understand what you're capable of and what you can tolerate. If you don't do that up front, you're going to do it in a project and there's nothing more stressful than trying to convince someone to use something midway through or at the end of a project versus at the beginning. So I, I cannot stress that enough uh, in the way you, uh, you approach your transformation. That's great, Dan. Thank you. Um, lastly, just to before we get into the questions, uh, just a reminder, everyone, if you haven't applied to the Community Service Recovery Grant, the deadline is next week. So just as a friendly reminder for anyone to leverage this as to help lead any of your transformational uh, initiatives, or even from a staffing perspective based on the three tiers. And now um, I'll hand the floor over to Roger. Uh, Roger, a few questions have come in, um, come in, or maybe would you like to decide which questions we would answer uh, during this call, or, and then we would provide feedback to any of the remaining ones indirectly after. Um, we have a, quite a few questions um, from the audience. Uh, I think some questions do deserve an answer right now. We will not be able to answer all the questions, but I think I will. I'll bring up some questions to Dan right now. Uh, this is from an anonymous attendee. Uh, what is your experience in an agile transformation in an organization, moving from a traditional product approach to a value-based approach, which is organizing around value? Uh, Dan, do you have any comment on that? Oh yeah, I am a huge, huge proponent of um, agile um, uh, transformation, and I'll just say delivery as a whole. I really, what I love about agile is this concept of bringing business value forward and working in iterative fashion to implement your change in your organization. There's a lot of great things about that in that you can checkpoint on your, um, your progress in implementing your change and pivot accordingly if things aren't showing up um, as needed. Also, you get to engage all the major stakeholders and subject matter experts in the work you're trying to do, uh, helping to facilitate the change across. I find it tr in traditional implementations, if you do a structured approach, you might end up with a solution that's not uh, fit for the job you wanted it to do because you haven't gotten the right level of engagement, feedback, or testing in, the, in, in what you're trying to do. And I would argue it's not just technology, it's process change and organizational change. So big, big proponent. I think it's one of the tools in your toolkit that can make you successful in uh, driving transition, uh, transformation in the organization. Thank you, Dan. Uh, next question is from Julian. Uh, digital transformation often result in removal of redundancy, which also could mean needing few headcount. How, how would you tackle these sensitive topics? So, you know, my experience has actually been um, you remove inefficiency in the organization. It may be that um, the people that were doing that role uh, will take on new roles uh, that will evolve. Um, so, you know, you need to think of your why you're doing automation. Is it to reduce cost, to reduce if, inefficiencies or increase your capacity to do more? Uh, what I've seen in many organizations is the people that were doing the role may be trained to take on the exceptions management. You might need less um, people in that organization. But if people bring uh, skill sets and are willing to learn new things, they can be uh, leveraged in other aspects of the organization. Transformation to me is about new capability. It's about bringing something new to your organization and you need people, like you're always going to need people. So I, I think you need, again, to be honest with yourself on what are the goals that you're trying to achieve through automation. If it's cost reduction, absolutely, that's one opportunity. And I would say having a robust change management plan with support from your people and culture team on how you want to approach that is critical. Um, and if it's, uh, if it's at all possible, where it makes sense is uh, retraining people to learn the new capabilities needed or reallocate them to other areas in the organization where they can have the greatest impact. So it does not always translate to job loss. Uh, job change, I think it would be the term I would use. Yeah, good, good answer. Another thing is this day we encourage people not to look at job loss, but rather do more with less, right? Yep. Instead of replacing people, the, the people that you have, 
can do more. Uh, I got a question. We got a question specific to United Way. It's from a list. Uh, does the United Way develop a clear definition of transformation that everyone in the organization understand? I think one of the greatest hurdles around transformation and innovation is that it can have many meanings, which causes confusion and mistrust of the concept. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's funny. I just had a session like this yesterday. <laughs> um, and the way I overcame that was taking leaders from all aspects of the organization to establish our digital vision. And we landed on the key aspects of transformation that are important to us. Because like I said, um, digital transformation can involve many, many things. It could be increasing your brand recognition online to driving efficiencies to your organizations, to leveraging data, to make better decision-making, foundationally uh, building in cybersecurity. So you could be looking at all aspects of that. But the way I've overcome that is by engaging your team in the creation of the vision, of the goals you're going after, you get a lot of buy-in for the work you're doing. And if your vision needs external support for you to actually be successful, you need to bring your external partners along the way. Um, in many cases, they might not fully get where you're trying to go, but if they trust you, if you, they trust that you have their best uh, well-being in mind as you're thinking of this transformation, they will give you the space, they will follow you and try to support the work. Um, and in some cases, people may never just get there. So you have a decision to make in that space to say, you know, if this is the direction the organization's going to take, and you need to take it because that means your success in delivering your strategic plan, staying alive, uh, being moving forward, then you need to think about either shifting people in roles that don't have a direct impact in your transformation, or potentially offering them opportunities outside of the organization, helping them find things. Um, not everyone can adapt to the changes that you're trying to make in an organization. And I think you have to be honest about that um, as you're approaching it. But involving people versus telling them what it is, is mm. a sure way of ensuring you're going to be successful in delivering your digital transformation. Good, good point. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're running um, off time. Daniel? Yes. So I yeah. think with that, uh, right, like we just to clear uh, any anonymous questions, we will take offline to provide uh, get feedback from Dan, and maybe include that as a separate brief. If it's anonymous directly, we will get back to you from Dan directly. Um, and just to really close off, we really wanted to to say thank you to everyone for joining this call. Right, my perspective and from the process fusion, it was to foster collaboration. Uh, one of the pieces is I want to ensure that we publish new content that's relevant in the future. So we'll be sending out a survey as well as the deck after this within one week. So this can be digested and some of this content taken out. I'm hoping that individuals even on this call would be able to share some of their insights into future conversations so we can create a stronger, stronger community together. Um, Dan, I know you're, would you like to even list some of the things you're working on? Yeah, um, I have a very exciting initiative. It's just starting, but I, I truly believe in uh, our sector, uh, partnerships between private, public, um, um, and ourselves can transform the way we deliver services in our sector. So I'm looking at hosting um, a, uh, a forum in which we can really work together to tackle some uh, complex problems that United Way is facing and has faced. What I know to be true is doing the same thing and expecting results is not a, a formula for success. So we need to um, be bold and approach uh, things a bit differently. And there was one question about failure. To me, it's about learning. Um, you need to learn from what you're not doing well so that you can set yourself up to be successful moving forward. If everything is deemed a failure, you'll be scared to try uh, new things. And that's a recipe for uh, disaster, in my opinion. Okay, that's great. So as we send out the deck afterwards, you will see more supporting content, but really just wanted to say thank you for everyone joining the call. We appreciate your time and we honestly hope you found the information useful. We'll send out a brief survey so we can better support and, and improve on this for any future seminars. Thank you very much, everyone, for taking the time to join us.